Good afternoon, Britain. It's 33 minutes past one. Two female boxers who previously failed a gender eligibility test have been cleared to compete at the Paris 2024 Olympics. Well, Algeria's Iman Khalif was disqualified by the International Boxing Association over high testosterone levels. And Taiwan's Lin Yu Ting failed a biochemical test for gender eligibility. Both are deemed to pose an unfair advantage among other athletes. But should they be banned for the, from this year's tournament? Well, joining us now is the author of Fair Play for Women, Fiona McAnina. Um, Fiona, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, firstly, I, I, there's a lot of confusion in the reporting around this. Obviously, there have been some cases in the past where um, women born as women have naturally high testosterone levels, and, and sometimes there have been cases where it's transgender women. Do we know which it is in this case? It's never about naturally high testosterone levels in women. When they talk about females with, with these high testosterone levels, they're really talking about males with disorders of sex development. Uh, and in some cases, rarely happens in developed countries, but in some cases, babies born with these disorders are wrongly uh, labeled as female. And then they grow up and go through male puberty and everyone then knows they're male. They have, I don't know these two individuals in particular, but this is um, well documented now, for example, with, with Castor Semenya, that they have internal testes, they produce testosterone, they go through puberty, they have all those advantages. And frankly, the, the prospect of these people uh, boxing against women if they are male is terrifying. And we should be very concerned. And the IOC should be very concerned, but seemingly they are not. Fiona, I've got some statistics here that say um, that, 90 that men have a 90% increased bicep strength and 162% uh, greater punch power, meaning that the average man's punch has 2.6 times the force of one delivered by a woman. Are the Olympic Committee putting women's lives at risk? I think there can be no doubt they're putting women's lives at risk. But bear in mind that this is their stated policy. They have said that uh, there should be no presumed advantage for trans-identifying males, what they call transgender women, or for people with differences of sex development, uh, which is what we believe uh, applies here. What that means is they are saying that if you're male, but you say that you're a woman, that that's what they, they think is important. And in, in most other sports, this is not allowed, certainly in the in the, the biggest Olympic sports. But what's happened in boxing is that it was always sex-based. It's one of the few that never got this wrong because of the safety issues. But the International Boxing Association has been de-recognized by the IOC for other reasons to do with corruption. And so these are the IOC's own rules now being played out in boxing. That's what? a fascinating distinction. It, it, it's also interesting to note that, that because this is... Uh, it's a very difficult line, is it not, when the, there are people who might be registered as, as intersex, and it's a, such a tiny, small proportion of, of, of people that exist on, on the Earth. But it, it seems like that might be what's at play here, is it not? There are people registered, everyone's registered either male or female, but yes, you are right that there is a tiny number of people who are wrongly registered as female at birth. And as I, I've explained, when they go through puberty, that becomes extremely apparent. Now, those people are overrepresented in sport because, of course, if you're registered female and you have all the advantages of male puberty, you are going to outperform a, a lot of other women. Um, so really, a, a small number of males uh, are, are causing unsafe play and indeed um, unfairness too across lots of other sports. Uh, and it's very stark in boxing because of the safety issue. Uh, it, it is dangerous. And it's nothing to do with, with size or weight, by the way, because if you match uh, male and female for weight, uh, as happens in boxing and weightlifting and judo and so on, the male still has that gigantic advantage that, that Emma has described. Uh, so this is a problem not just in boxing, but it's suddenly becoming very apparent now that this is not safe. How can they justify this difference from the policy of the International 
Boxing Association when it's so clear that this actually poses a, a serious safety issue for women? Because, of course, there are all sorts of issues when it comes to um, biological men participating in women's sports. But it seems so obvious that in a sport like boxing that women could actually die as a result of this decision. And surely they, they are aware that they may be held accountable if that happens, if they've chosen, actively chosen to differ from the International Boxing Association's policy on this. Well, you would think so, but you see, when your policy is driven by ideology rather than science, this is where you end up, because the IOC made that statement in 2021 saying no presumed advantage on the basis of trans identity or, or, or differences of sex development. So now they're stuck with following that through. If you say that trans women are women, then this is where you end up. The, these boxers, as we understand it, do not have trans identities, but they have disorders of sex development. Mm. They have male bodies. So, but, but the impact for women competing against them is the same, and it is indeed dangerous. But I would say, you know, it, we shouldn't have to wait until it's seriously dangerous like this. We've known that it's unfair. In the Tokyo Olympics, we had a male weightlifter in the women's competition, and everyone knew that was unfair, uh, and still nothing was done. So weightlifting internationally has finally changed its rules, and now they don't allow um, males in, in women's competitions, but it took the, the Tokyo Olympics to make that change. Um, but this, is, this one is all really on the IOC. This is their choice, it's their policy. Now, we don't know whether these individuals um, actually even knew that they were intersex or had a, a difference in biological uh, sex development as they were growing up. Um, it, it seems that there is a lot of uncertainty around this case. But what we do know is that with intersex people, they might also be at risk themselves if they were put in the male category. I mean, what should happen here? Perhaps a third category? Look, everyone is either male or female, and you're quite right. They may not have known. Um, they, ha they have been subject to tests in the past. It seems pretty clear now. It's not complicated to work out if someone's male or female. There are lots of simple ways of doing that now. Um, most people never get to the Olympics. So quite honestly, if they're not good enough to box in the men's category, they shouldn't be there. Um, it, it, there's, no, there's no right for people to get access to sport in order to perform. Um, but there is an expectation that women and girls will have equal opportunity in sport. And that has to mean not having to compete against anyone male. That's, that's what's simple about this. OK, well, Fiona Macarini, Macanina, thank you so much for talking us through uh, that, that really fascinating story.